There you are. No, oh, I'm back again. No, that's right. Um, so yeah, they they like the, the they like the idea of those links being made by the crowd and then aggregated by their back end, so that um, there would be a collaborative process between fans, readers, um, to create this um, whatever the word is, this metadata-driven sort of extra layer on top of the original text. Yeah, I think that. I think there's an in opportunity for fiction is a, is interesting for sure, but certainly in nonfiction. But in fiction, I think there's an opportunity to layer the metadata on by the publisher as a value added. Yeah, and the, the, they they push back against that. They push back against that a bit, but I, I think that's um, that may be because they do, you know, in a sense, because of their position in publishing, they do think of themselves. In, as a bit of a broadcast media medium, um, you know, um, somehow. Um, um, anyway, I mean, in a way, it's good that they're, so they're sort might, of... Here's, a, here's an end to it. You might ask them, do they have any indexing? Do they index any of their books? No. They never index. No. So indexing, is the, indexing is, in a sense, the, that post-author pre-publication activity that is what we're talking about. And we're talking about indexing in yes. a slightly different technique. And we talked about that a little. Um, I was talking about how um, my experience of meeting an indexer in the past and telling me about the specialized nature of the role and all of that. And um, they, uh, some of their publishers um, do that, but they say now um, a lot of the time it's the, it's the self-published um, author without the conventional editing process. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. where the money is, they're saying. Yeah. Um, so yeah. there's, uh, but, but really interesting. I mean, the, interesting. what I quite, I, I quite like about working with them, or, you know, hopefully, is that, again, actually, like BMP, their interests are commendably sort of broad and general and map well onto our sort of general interests, but they're actually very narrow. Um, and they're supremely uninterested in things outside this very narrow focus that they have. Sure. Well, okay. And, you know, it would be, given that you're going to have the texts, um, if you can see a way to either for them or not for them, and I know there's proprietary stuff involved, but if you could see a way to carve out a role where we might insert a tiddlywiki indexer into the process for one of these books, then you could sort of pre-develop yeah. for them. And I could do a, have a student do that as a project in the studio. Yeah, so that we do, um, uh, so I could, I could readily imagine that, that having done the automated conversion process, that in a later sprint, we explore, okay, what could we do if we invested X hours of editorial effort into, yeah. um, into the publication process? Yeah. I think, that, so, so it's going to be a great environment to explore that and the nice thing is the the numbers are big you know they they've got lots of different publications so even if there was a set only a subset that were amenable to presentation by a certain interesting technique that we wanted to explore you know the numbers are such that they'd still be worth doing and yeah, they've given me some of some of the books they give me in non-fiction as well yeah and um, the other thing just to, to wrap this one up the other thing they could potentially do is push back to their authors to yeah to change so, the authoring process. And then the studio yeah. could fit into that by we could train the author to write this way. So I went through a bit of that with them, talking about how Amazon um, uh, nurtures talent in the, in the movie creation process, how Tiddlywiki is used in, for world building, which maps very much onto mm -hmm. the self-author fantasy segment. And as they say, it's fantasy and romance that drives the numbers at the moment. Um, and they, they weren't that interested. Um, and yet, I quite, um, it seems, well, as I say, they, uh, they're interested in a reader centric experience and they want that to be very interactive where the reader is, you know, conversing with other people and so on. Um, yeah, it's odd. But, it's but, odd yeah, that. so they've got the money, but using the authors as a, as a, as a market is also interesting because if authors come with tiddly weeks, I agree. In fact, when I was talking to that, about that to them, it, it also struck me that the authors, well, we, we, we were discussing how um, 
the authors might be active across several um there might be a youtuber as well they might run a youtube mm -hmm. channel and gain a bunch of their income from that and so when you start to consider that i think any software or system that's serving them should needs to be sort of across all of those parts so it might help me to reuse my book material across my video production that kind of thing or make it easier for me to do affiliate links from the um, video material to the um, to the purchasable books that kind of thing and and as soon as you get into that discussion of course that's far too out, far outside their core competencies yeah. but I think really interesting for us because right. some of those people aren't very far away from I'm very far away from people like us um, right. so cool that sounds very interesting too yeah so um and then in terms of uh yeah and the BNP stuff keeps moving along yeah so there was a bit of a hiatus um, yeah. but that's um, what we, we've now signed a, a new contract that covers I think five Five sprints and up to a year. So you know they've it, it, all according to plan. We did, we've done the experimental sprint and they've they've kind of made I, I'd say quite a good substantial commitment, which is great. And the first bit of work is to incorporate the styling that I sent you, um, done by this girl Mary, which is easy and fun, and I'm really pleased because it looks great and be easy for me to learn from it and you know do other things that are better as a result. Um, and secondly, to get all of the, the real text in, because a huge issue for me has been the, the too much lorem ipsum text to the point where Chrome, when I'm working on the BMP stuff, Chrome continually says this page is in Latin. Do you want oh, to translate no. it? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been pressuring them for ages. And then something fascinating happened. Um, Addy has gone to, I can't remember what she, how she refers to them, but she, Addy's gone to these, the, these, this authoring company that, from the she, a sourcing team. So she's got this sourcing team that writes text on demand, fascinatingly. And I'm, I, I'm not really quite clear what the relationship is, whether they're part of um, the foundation or not, but, or an external organization. Organization. Um, and I, my, get, my inference, if that's the correct, yes, inference is that they're an external organization. So they, um, there was some discussion, but um, Addy was clear, and it's turned out to be the case that their um, huge preference is, is to write the text in Excel. In Excel? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it's, I, I mean, you, I sent you the files so you could just see no, what it's like. But the, um, the, the, it's slightly annoyingly, we've also now got the, um, they've collected together all of the logos that they, that we need. And it's quite a lot, it's like 50. And now those are being delivered as separate JPEG files, which feels a bit sort of old school, you know, like, um, like they're, yeah, like they're plugging into a conventional digital publishing pipeline instead of what I was hoping was we were connecting a digital publishing pipeline to their existing sort of Microsoft Office space production line. Right. Anyway, um, yeah. but it, the files are fine. Um, they've, and the text is fine, more to the point. I'm really pleased that I do actually now have um, reasonable text. Um, but isn't it amazing that they want to? So I'm going to now write new code that um, parses those Excel files directly. So the approach I'm thinking of taking with that is to have a, to institute a new Excel import process that's um, driven by a sort of map um, that, um, so that you can configure what each sheet of an incoming, how each sheet of an incoming spreadsheet maps onto individual tiddlers. So um, in, it'll be one, I'm thinking, one tool that will do the thing that you've always wanted, read a spreadsheet which has um, fields across the columns and um, tiddler titles down the rows. Mm -hmm. But we'll also read the formats that they've got and we'll do things like create um, tiddlers and, uh, sorry, not only create tiddlers, but also tag them according to again, a scheme specified in the same configuration file. Yeah, what I, what so, I, yeah, I generated those sheets with the tiddlers. 
out of tables. I, I'll send you. I'll, I'll send you a link to the spreadsheet. I did a bunch of that for them as well, actually. Yeah. Um, and and quite yeah, um, very easy. If you copy and paste, um, copy an Excel table. Sorry, copy a HTML table from TiddlyWiki into Excel. It does the right thing. Um, very nice and easy. Yeah. So that um, are you going to do this to Excel, or Google Sheets, or it'll be in either one? I'm thinking. I'm thinking of doing it to Excel is the easy thing where, um, because there are libraries that parse XLSX files ah. and um, you know, give you a reasonable programmatic access to the content. Um, and this will be Node.js only. It only runs under yeah. Node.js. So Some, that's kind of fine. Someday I'll get to Node.js. I'm al almost, you know. <laughs> I first went to GitHub. I thought that was a better first step. I think that's not. I think that's that's true. Yeah, you were saying about GitHub, and um, I think I started to look for links of things that you might enjoy reading about it, but um, um, but ran out of steam because there's an awful lot of terrible writing about GitHub. Yeah, and I'm not. They have a classroom um, program where they encourage students to use it. So I'm going to look into that for the documentation class. But the so far my experience with the wiki is kind of weird because you basically edit the file in Firefox, and then you just, you know, you upload it to GitHub. So the, you, you don't really have the versioning experience that. Oh yeah, you're talking about the stuff you've been doing with using GitHub pages. For yeah, GH pages. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's the, it's in, I, mean, I mean, it's really convenient if you're in GitHub, and if your stuff is stored in GitHub repos, to use that as a means of publication, um, but it's not—it's not really—it's not a sufficient incentive to get into using GitHub. Um, right. The only the value that I see it over Dropbox is that you can rename files more easily. You don't have to regenerate these individualized Dropbox links for for wikis. Like if I, you know, because I'm the, my experience, my workflow is that I'm I get a, a yeah, you get nicer URLs. That's a, that's a very good point. Yeah, I get a wiki, I save it, I critique it, I write in it, and then I have to serve it. What what do you get over to this spot though? Tiddly spot. You have to set everything up, right? And it's a pain in the neck. You have to like every new wiki. You have to kind of create it and password it and stuff like that. Two things. I, I, I use I, I use Tiddly Spot a lot for creating the um, Hangout wikis. Um, uh -huh. So, and and each time I I clone the old Hangout wiki into a new Tiddly Spot. And in fact, the as you say, you need to enter the username and password, yeah. and the password is cached in the browser, and the username is, is part of the wiki. Um, but having control of those two things is actually really cool, because it means that you can navigate to blah, blah, dot, tiddlyspot com, then change the username field um, and provide the new password, and, and that allows you to then save to another tiddly spot. So the act of cloning a wiki in Tiddly Spot, although it's not obvious, is actually really intuitive and quite quick. And I find that that's, you know, for a lot of the stuff that we do, that's one of the repeated operations and you know, the endless so you, things you do. So you clone it, to, that's to create a new wiki? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I mean, for the Hangout wiki, I'm modifying the previous wiki each time. So it's a sort of smearing. I get, I get a new one from a student. So I get a wiki from a student that I would then want to critique. So I have to do a, I have to download it, save it, I have to put it somewhere, and then I open it and write in it. No, what you could do is, so, so they've sent you ed.tiddlyspot.com. Right, you then, if they send me, tiddly, if, if they use tiddlyspot, okay, so they send me a tiddlyspot. Yeah, and then you, um, and in fact, they could, they could also do that, this part with Dropbox. So they send you a link right. to the wiki. The, um, oh no, it does need to be to this spot, actually, I think, for reasons that will become clear in a moment. But you could, could experiment and see, right, but right, definitely right. this works with Tiddly Spot. Then you create a Tiddly Spot wiki called Ed Critique. Um, and that's a pain that you have to do that, granted, right. but still. Um, and then um, you go back to their wiki, you go to the Tiddly Spot panel and control panel, you change the, user, the username to Ed, or the wiki name it is actually, sorry, to Ed-critique, oh, exactly. put your password in. Then when you next press save, 
get saved to your copy, you make your changes, off you go. So interesting. So if I could automate the process of, cre of creating the tiddly spots. Well, and it, it turns out that even that, it's not too much of a bore. You have, yeah. a, uh, you have a bookmark to tiddlyspot.com. Um, no, uh, you not that bad. Yeah, and you could I could probably you could probably script it if you wanted to. Um, I think you could. Um, they uh, it's something I have looked into a bit, and uh, and certainly it would be yeah um, uh, yeah you might be able to. And you need some sort of unique naming for each of these spin-off tiddlers. Yeah, but you can outsource that to your students by making them come up with a unique name that you then prefix. Or suffix. So the, um, yeah, no, I get the trouble I have with having a, a um, stable tiddly spot tiddlers is that, or tiddly wikis is that there's no management system for me available. Like, where's the list of my tiddly spots? Like, how do I know which ones I've reached, yeah. which participants? Yep, agreed. So agreed. that's why that's agreed. where the GitHub or the Dropbox works because the, the mm. file repository mm. itself has stored mm. information. Yeah, I mean, I guess the best we can do about that would be to collect the links in one of the wikis. Right, no, if I collected the links and, you know, now I've got workflow. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's all part of the, I sent you a, um, it was all part of creating course management system based on an in tiddly wiki. It's, it's, you know, without, without creating the need for a server, it's just, it's like a, it's a, Oh, you know, I'm a huge fan. I always show off that volleyball example in Tiddly Wiki 5 of somebody creating a volleyball course in Tiddly Wiki because that just seems so extreme, the fact that the volleyball teacher was able to get his head around doing it. And yeah, it's yeah. lovely. Well, the creating the course and support, so providing materials, one thing, it's the interaction with the students. Hmm. With, and well, if, you know, that's what you need to write. The, there's a bunch, uh, about a year ago, there was a bunch of uh, people in the TiddlyWiki community who mobilized themselves to explore this space. And the particular thing they got interested in was integrating with XAPI, which is this uh, standardized API for recording progress, um, kind of so when you complete quizzes and things in an okay. online learning environment. And I was never that I was never that taken by it because it seems that seems I I mean I I watch some people who do things like badges are a big deal there are all these sorts of um, I don't do quizzes talk. I'm not into I just I just no I'm not really interested in this yeah. either I, think I want them to read and write and they, I want, I'd I rather measure read what they write exactly I'd rather I'd rather that's how you measure their what you measure their progress by what they've done not the boxes they've ticked exactly so. And but the, but the, the fact remains, though, when you, even when you express it, as you did, about course management, that there's a bunch of people in the community now who are very interested in that stuff, particularly a guy called Richard Williams. He must have yeah, been a little bit interested. Yeah, I've, I've seen, did, did, did he, was, he was working on something with you at one point, or is that somebody else? Yes, that's right. No, I think that's right, assuming modulo whether I've got his surname correct. Yeah, um, okay, I'll look him up again. Um... Yeah, so, okay. And um, is, in terms of um, the fall semester. Yeah, no, really exciting. Very pleased that you're getting excited about it. Yeah, well, the two things, the, um, the software documentation class, I really have no idea what I'm going to do in there yet, but it'll come. Um, so that's one thing. The concept of a weekly conversation with you, um, we had, I'll send you another email about it. We, I think I had said... Wednesdays at 10 again. Turns out that yes. I actually teach till 1030 on Wednesdays. I forgot that I actually had that job. <laughs> so uh, we'll have to adjust it a little bit. Um, I would like to upgrade, if we could, think about upgrading the production quality. I'm thinking of going someplace with a higher quality microphone because everyone tells me that that's the key to having better podcasts. It's the audio in. Ah. I bought, and I'm not using it right now, but I bought a um, decent-ish HD webcam with integrated stereo mics. Okay, good. So you've upgraded, so I'm going to try and do the same. Um, I should go and get it and plug it in, actually. Cause, um, well, and let's see if we can upgrade, because the idea of creating a, you know, a tiddly-wiki 
podcast and if and if you're and, and I know you're you're probably comfortable enough with just okay showing up and whatever I've got ready if I get stuff to you the day before that would be better yeah no I think that the times it's worked really well has been when I've had 10 minutes to look at things and just marshal a few thoughts but, I'm trying, um, but I'm, I was also thinking you know yeah. we um I'd, I'd be quite up for at some point, repeating what we did last time. Um, in other words, um, uh, kind of the way that we walked through that, that the stack of um, of Tiddy Wiki's elements. Yes, um, in a sense, treat last spring as a rough draft, and now basically, it, yeah. yeah, just the two of us. But we because I wouldn't have students, and I think that would be better. But create a set of conversations. Uh, and uh, maybe, and even that's not, that's excellent. Maybe go back to last year's review them, watch them and sort of use them as a script and repeat it. Yeah, I think that's right. Cause there was a few, I mean, rightly there were, Oh, look, you see, so now I'm on my new camera. Yeah. Um, there were a few, um, yeah. now does that seem any better then? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to do this from campus. And I want to get into either do it from our, we have a studio or something. And I want other people on campus to have to do some work for this. Because I want to set that expectation that if a faculty member is making a weekly podcast, you know, somebody's got to help. Um, That's great. Yeah. And so I just, and as far as I know, I'm going to be the only one on campus doing it. And so we're going to hopefully, and I've got James again um, to publish. Sure. And um, he's going to be, I, I've formalized his role. He's going to be the managing editor of Design Rights Studio. And I think I've got two other students on board, one for the freshman class and one for the documentation class who are going to write um, blogs, basically, weekly posts in a tiddly wiki and have tweets four or five times a week out to the students. So they're going to generate content and that's going to somehow get integrated. Um, as well as the podcasts that we talk about, which will not really be directly for either class, but will be generic. So it's a couple of different things working together, but I want James to kind of be this managing editor. So when they submit something, he at least reviews it and then pushes it. And that was really the, the point of getting into GitHub. Excellent. Excellent. I okay. think that GitHub's the right way to do it. Well, I think the I think experimenting is the right way to do yes. it. And GitHub is right. right. The, I, I would say that the great strength of GitHub is where um, at the moment you're manipulating the files that you're publishing directly, almost like one used to with FTPing to a server. Yes. Um, but GitHub really comes into its own when what you're publishing is the output from running, um, you know, running a thing, um, like running, uh, to, uh, running Tiddly Wiki and editing it in the browser. Um, and using it as a kind of, uh, a, a, as the last point of an automated chain, if you see what I mean, um, yes, works really well. You run. you run something and generate content, right? I mean, yeah. that, yes, it's like, I, so can't I guess again, that, that's, yeah, that's just saying next stop Node.js, I think. But in, but the other thing that popped up while you were talking was something we talked about before, which is better integration of video and you know intertwingling of it and annotation of one with the other and all of that. Um, and there's probably only a couple of basic macros, um, some of which you know there has been some activity on YouTube um, macros before now, but probably not much more than that um, needed. You know, so that we can, um, the, the, the sorts of things I would love to do, and it's a bit elaborate, is for instance, have it so that the current position within the video is in a tiddler, and then you'd be able to write code that would, or you know, wiki text, that would show and hide things according to the position, and we'd have sort of named sections of the video and that kind of thing. Yes, um, that so, would be exactly right. Yeah, I've yeah. always... Yes, because you've got a you've got a time stream, and if you can tie a tag to a stream, so that any time you're in, you know, with a window, thirty seconds of this moment, this tag is present. And exactly. So you're tagging, and you tag concepts as you're talking about them. They they maybe they come and go, and there's an intensity. You could that that would be fascinating. Um, how how 
That's dumb. And, and again, it's in, actually, it's in scope a bit for the publishing people because they, they have publications that have video and they're, and they're quite, you know, they're in that way, self-conscious way almost the print or well they're not print oriented but their environment is print oriented so mm -hmm. they um they like they love video um, so one way to fake that to demo that before you actually write code because since i can't write code i always <laughs> demo it is you could take a video and chunk it into one minute segments and tag each of the one minutes Yes. I mean, if only if only the tools for chunking videos were better. That's right. that's kind of the problem, I suppose. So if um, you could solve the problem of how to get the current time mark of the video playing in a wiki. The, the yeah, I think we, I think we also need a, um, a a single video overlay. So yeah. at the moment, we watch videos within Tiddler. I yes. think there should be, be more like iTunes where there's a playlist and it plays and when you click on a video it adds it to the playlist and it, they play in a separate overlay over the wiki. Uh, and well, when we get there then I can do my interactive film where the, the students have tagged their 25 minutes, you know, 20 different five minute segments of film and then you can assemble them based on a set of tags and then play. Well, there's a... There's a proto in here really this um the help panel which um oh I've got a bit of this in my the help panel um contains um videos because um it works you know for, i mean obviously this is the intention was to stack up a whole load of tutorial videos mm -hmm. and the idea is that it's useful to be able to interact with the wiki whilst you're watching the videos um, but I say I think we need to do it to encourage because otherwise yeah, if you're this running is this now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is on the pre-release that that um this uh this is a plugin, the help plugin that adds this little help pop-up. That's um, pre that's in pre-release? Uh, it's not, it's on the main thing as well, but it just happens the plugin's already added on the pre-release. I see. So, if you find, I mean, Lord, I'm terrible at remembering the names of these things, help panel. So if you install um, that plugin from the plugin library, um, you'll get it. And it's, it's obviously, it's highly configurable. The each panel support and videos, you know, those are tiddlers um, exactly as you would expect tagged help panel. I should use that in my software documentation class because they could use this with any piece of software. This whole, that, that's just, that's the entire class right there. I mean, that's all I need. That's perfect. Great. Well, in terms of the software documentation stuff, I think the, um, uh, you, the, the, the place to start that I think might be quite, that I would enjoy would be to just collect up some great examples of, um, uh, software that has been documented. Yes, of course. Um, I guess. Um, and that underscore one is still, that's my go-to example, and uh, I guess you know about Newth's um, work on tech. I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> okay, so no, this is amazing. So Donald Newth writes, yeah. starts writing his nine-volume um, summary of computer science, gets three volumes through, gets frustrated with the publication process, takes 10 years off in order to write a complete stack of publishing software, so he wrote a system called Metafont for designing fonts, and it's awful, sadly. Um, it is fonts designed. Uh, they might as well have fonts designed by a PE teacher. And, uh, and tech, this layout a, a, right. engine. And the, both things he published as a book under, by Addison Wesley where the, um, uh, the source code of tech is the book. So... Um, uh, it's absolutely remarkable. It's, um, in other words, all the text in the book is um, comments in the in the tech um, and um, as, uh, sorry, comments in the script, um, and it's all intermingled. I'm not explaining it very well, and I should really find a reference. But it's absolutely beautiful, and it's such a lovely personal story about this man and what he did. And he's the guy um, who wrote Tech, right? And LaTeX. He didn't write LaTeX. LaTeX came afterwards. Yeah, um, that's an implementation. So he wrote a reference implementation. Yeah, I remember that guy. What, he's and in, I think Pascal. Um, what's his name? Donald. Um, 
Newth, K N U T H. Yes. Um, and the art of programming, I think. That's right. Um, and I'm just looking at his full list of books. I think it might, the one I'm thinking of actually might be the Metaphon. Um, Okay, they all, he sort of republished them. No, it is the tech book that I'm talking about. Um, so volumes B, uh, hang on, let me send you the link that I'm looking at. Oh, no, I should just screenshot that. Oh, I've um, got it. Yeah, the tech book. Uh, exactly that. So I, I'm looking at it here, and this is the money quote. Volumes B and D contain the source code for tech and metafont written with the literate programming methodology. And the literate programming methodology oh, is another book. <laughs> First in a series of eight volumes. <laughs> methodology combines programming and includes the document. And I, I, I think lots of programmers, um, we love the idea of source code as literature and you know, intertwingling it. Um, but yeah, you'll really struggle to find examples. Um, most, um, when I look at other open source projects that I try to use the code of, most code just isn't documented. Um, and and uh, some of that is purists who believe that documentation isn't necessary, that the code can be its own documentation, which is wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, um, and some of it must be incompetent. <clears throat> so... Yeah, and I don't know how many software developers I'll have, but my, my idea is to, well, they were going to use GitHub because they should, I guess, and I just don't know how to read their stuff in it or what I do with it, but I'll figure that out. Um, well, I mean, they... And they, they, some of them might not be as programmy as they, as they need to be, and they might actually... Another kind of crazy idea I was having for a little while was using the opportunity to build the course management system in TiddlyWiki. So they'd have to develop a few processes and have them actually write the processes, which is not really code, but maybe they'll get into writing a few macros in TiddlyWiki and then document that in the TiddlyWiki so that the students are writing the software for the course and documenting it as they're taking the course in computer software documentation. Do they want to, do, do, they, and, but do they want to write software though? Or? Well, they're computer science majors. Okay, okay. But they don't have, they don't want to write it. But I mean, the soft, it's not quite software. It's like, well, it's a macro. It's not, I don't think of it as software, but it sort of is. It's a system and a process. You know, and I want to get, I want to get this, I want to get them to break their processes into small chunks so that when I change the middle of the process from a Google Sheets form to a tiddler that they submit, they only have to change that part of the documentation. I want them to feel like, oh my God, I have to change it all and that was really dumb because my initial thing didn't get the task small enough. So I, I made a 10 minute video. There's a minute in the middle that I need to change and I should have made three three minute videos. I want them to have that experience. <laughs> so... Um, okay, could you, how many students will there be on this course? Uh, 22 fully online, no synchronicity. Um, okay, so I wonder if you could... Um, Mm, I think there's, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm drifting there, but uh, I think there's some very interesting exercises that you could do. And what I was just idly wondering was that, that whether you could kind of multiply the students together mm -hmm. by having each of them do two things, which, uh, which um, I mean, so one in each of two categories that interoperate. So the example, and it doesn't quite work, is that each of the 22 write a bit of code and then each of the 22 write a tool that, um, I mean, the, the code that they write is a tool that reads source code and adds documentation. That's a silly way I've expressed it. But then they run it across the entire classes. Each of them run their tool across the entire classes' tools. So sorry but if that makes sense. But um, uh, the multiplication factor would be a really fun way of, capitalizing on having a group of people and on making comparisons 
Um, and I guess, I guess the way that that would have to work was that each of them wrote a, co wrote a program in any language they like with comments that are easily parsable. So, you know, maybe the comments have a special symbol to say on the comment. You just, you know, because you don't want them to write a programming language parser. Um, and that each of them writes a program in of their own choice um, that reads such a program and presents the comments as documentation along with the source code. Sorry, I've explained that so bad. Yeah, then I, you get I, this, you get yeah. this multiplying together thing. I don't, I can't guarantee because there's no prerequisites that all my students would have that set of skills. Um, the programming, yeah. Uh, but I mean, and some of them are they're not all computer science students. Some of them are math students, so they're not necessarily. A, but what I like about the concept is that I could use TiddlyWiki to accomplish that. Yes. Yeah. All the code is in text, so they can just paste it in Tiddlers, and then they could literally take the, they could do all that at an HTML level, and they could kind of learn the way of seeing how mm -hmm. they could write, they could write documentation inside a text-based um, piece of source code, and then the documentation could be visible or not visible based on their macro and all that stuff. Okay. I think the other thing I'd be really interested to do is to deconstruct in a sort of typical academic way what documentation versus code means. And you know, I'm sure you could um, yes. do, do that discussion. I mean, we could do that discussion very quickly. Um, but, to, um, uh, but then to encourage them to, do, to explore creating documentation that wasn't in an electronic format. Um, so, uh, kind of as a as a way of trying to think about the trying to think about documenting code not as a matter of bit twiddling and transformation processes and um, you know as a matter of um, coding, but trying to think of it, um, trying to draw out what it means in the abstract to simplify a complex thing and present it in another way so that people can quickly assimilate what it means. Um, did, you mean you know, documenting in a non, did you mean documenting non-digital processes or documenting digital processes? Digital. Imagine making a sculpture of how a bubble sort worked, I guess. Um, uh, it would be a very yes. trivial example. And, uh, and it'd be almost... Uh, I said sculpture, and they could have said visualization, but I was just thinking uh, that you know, making something physical might also be um, you know, a large sheet of paper, I suppose, something that could be digital. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know, just, just thoughts, really, because I think there's a, the, the trouble with when they say documentation of source code, is that how it's expressed? It, it doesn't matter how it's expressed. It's whatever I want to do with it. I have okay. all I have. Because, is, it, it, I mean, it, I, the, the course does have to, it's writing. It satisfies upper division writing. So the students have to engage in a lot of writing. And so by documentation, I'm interpreting mm, that. Okay. They have to describe how to accomplish technical processes in a step-by-step -step way. That's sort of documentation. Yeah, okay. And it could be a software. And software very broadly defined, it could be a process. It could be the, to how do you document the act of submitting a form, getting a response and forwarding it on to your professor or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's like a, mm -hmm. how do you document and I, well, I, I like the bootstrapping that you're doing there of getting them to write the software of the, um, uh, of the course management system. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool actually. And, and it's, um, you know, you might spend a, a couple of weeks doing that, building up some processes, like how do you submit an assignment? And that would get them sort of, and somebody could write the code. That way, a few people, somebody could write the process, somebody could document it, somebody could test yes. it, and you get yes. those revisions. You know, and that's what I'm after, is that revision process. So. Yes, I see. And every, well, very, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So anyway, so that was fun. So um, we'll continue to do this. Um, and um, if yeah, so we'll 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 keep moving forward. Um, indeed, indeed. Well, hopefully, I'm going to pick up this uh, the contract from Dickens soon, and then um, I guess well, one of the things that's the Tiddly space, right? Yeah, and so then I think one of the things that I need to do in the background that will be fun to get you to help me with, uh, is, or to help each other with, is to kind of think of the best. Think of how to fold all these things together. You know, there's this wonderful opportunity to repurpose 
the things that um, I do for Xavier for BMP and um, for Design Studio as well. Yeah, um, and then the um, in the books especially, the textbook market and the course management system. Mm. And, and what I'm doing in creating a learning environment, integrating a text and exercises and interaction, I think is um, that's powerful. And I'm hoping to sort of build, you know, there's a funding stream in the system to do that. And it also includes open textbooks. It's committed to being open. So that all fits. And the translation, um, I'd love to get a little tool quickly, actually, that would help with some um, credibility building that would allow me to drop a Word document and return it. <laughs> you know, just... Just yeah, well, yeah, that's again that that's your incentive to get stuck into Node.js. Yes, because that's going to need to be Node.js. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and in fact, um, one could imagine squeezing some of it into the browser, but it's Node.js that it works um, where it works at the moment. Because that's where I get to prep. And Node.js and does and GitHub essentially are going to be the same thing. I can create things. Yeah, I mean they they, they complement one another. Look, the other thing that's interesting is that all three of the gigs ultimately involve um, interest in a server side. So BMP mm -hmm. um, absolutely got to the point in the, you know, in the discussions that were now some weeks ago um, as essentially using TiddlyWiki as a, as a conventional extranet where it sits and runs on a server and lots of people can connect to it, get authenticated and can read stuff. Dickens obviously trying to do this publication on a server and ultimately the same with Xavier. And so that might, you know, a lot of the Windows is going to have to sit on a server. It just has to. Yeah, and and a lot of the the the, the obstacles that have slowed you down, and the other things that we've been doing have actually been the lack of a um, of a suitably pliable server environment for you to work with. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, the, some of the shenanigans you've had for dealing with Dropbox, both in terms of training the students and just the logistics for you. Um, so that'd be good if by the end of the year we're in a better position. Um, for and then the last thought I want to leave you with is I'm thinking of expanding our podcast Wednesday mornings, but we might from time to time invite other guests. Mm, that's a great idea. That would be fun. You know, one guest yeah. kind of thing. So if you could begin to think about different people who are doing stuff that is related to this, that we could then muse with them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, selfishly, a great thing to do is to use the community as a source of people to talk yes, to about this. Exactly right, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna push Design Right back through the the group, and I noticed somebody tweeted. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're some like who who is Tiddly tweeter? Do you know? It's the same guy as Josiah on the um, on the groups. Josiah, okay. Josiah, Josiah Hinks, he's called. So he's a um, I have spoken to him off list. And he's, um, let me see if I can find the message he sent me this morning. Um, he's a um, anthropologist. Um, he studied oral cultures and he's now, he's now a filmmaker um, and he, a film editor. Um, so quite an interesting chat, but he sometimes, I think he's, he might be Italian or something. I mean, he sometimes expresses himself in a, in a slightly, I'm not sure what the word is otios and um way um and and confident overly yeah. confident. good so where's he based do you know i i have a vague impression italy but i'm not sure okay um, cool yeah i love it no <laughs> they will all you know so okay hey i will catch you um maybe we could do this next week Does that makes sense yeah no i'll i let, let, let's aim to do it i mean i guess maybe we bounce back to wednesday again by default um yeah so let me because that's the day i'm definitely on campus oh uh, okay so wednesdays is the production day for me on campus Fine. 10 30 or, or even 11 if, it, if that's getting too late for you right uh, no, that would be okay. But Thursday actually does make more sense for me next week. So fine, let's let's aim for the same. In fact, I'm I'm going to move. Yeah, let's um let's let's go for the same time next Thursday, twenty fifth. Uh, except I. Um. Okay, because next Wednesday doesn't work for you. Oh uh, no, it could do. What time would it have to be? Um, I have to check because it's a, it's, we haven't started classes yet. So it's a meetings week. So let me, let me check and figure out what the right day is Wednesday or Thursday. And I'll do that today.
Okay, well, I mean, either 10 or 11, your time is good, but 12, your time is fine too. Okay, uh, sounds good. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks. Um, cheers then. Have a good time. I'll speak to you later. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.